Coming up next. ESPN and the Professional Bowlers Association present the championship round finals of the ABC West Lanes Open. Two-time PBA Player of the Year, Amlito Monticelli has qualified fifth, but earlier this year he won four matches and climbed all the way to the top of the stepladder en route to capturing his 12th career championship. Making his first appearance in the final five is 25-year-old Mark Bradley of Akron, Ohio. Also making his initial appearance in championship round play is right-hander Greg Kemp of Bryan, Texas. After a two-year absence from the PBA's winner circle, powerful Jim Pensack has solidified second place while one of the PBA's most gifted young stars, Bob Vespi, will look to become only the fourth player on tour this year to capture multiple championships. Welcome everyone to ABC West Lanes, located in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Hi everybody, I'm Denny Schreiner, and welcome to the final stop on the PBA Summer Tour for the Touring Professionals. And if you're a fan that likes the highest scores, you've tuned into the right telecast because there were 10 300 games shot this week. While we're on the subject of high scores, PBA Hall of Famer Mike Durbin joins me once again. And Mike, they knocked down a lot of sticks this week. Yeah, Danny, they certainly did. Our uh, finalists, our five finalists tonight, combined for TV average on this pair of 225. Two of the top five finalists, Greg Kemp and Mark Bradley, bowled 300 games last night. So with 10 300, Danny, anything could happen tonight. And Leto Botticelli has had kind of a funny year. During the winter tour, it didn't do too much. Over the last eight weeks, though, he has turned it up a notch. He is poised for the number five position. Well, he won just a few weeks ago when he won in Edmond, Oklahoma. He won our summer uh, international classic there. He's still thinking of bowler of the year, Dan. Uh, I know in the back of his mind, he figures he can win a couple more times and still be a threat for bowler of the year. Four wins tonight, he could do it. Our number four qualifier hails from my hometown, the home of the PBA, Akron, Ohio, and we're speaking of Mark Bradley, and boy, can he throw strikes. And he's an unknown commodity, a very big man, and he shot some very big scores last night. The last four games, he averaged 267 with a 300 game, but Denny, he's going to be nervous tonight uh, going against a veteran like Man Monticelli. Ooh, I think he's in trouble that first game. <laughs> Greg Kemp has excelled in AAA, if you were going to call the PBA regional program a, a AAA organization. He now looks to step up to the major leagues and try and win his first title in the PBA Tour. Well, he's been Southern Region Player of the Year. Earlier this year in our National Resident Pro Championship, he finished third. He's an outstanding player, but it takes confidence to win at this level. We'll see if that confidence comes forward tonight. Interesting you mentioned confidence because Jim Pensack was full of it. He won 16 consecutive games in the championship round and lost a couple of years ago. It's his first telecast in two seasons. He's looking to get back into the winner's circle. And Jim is such a streaky bowler, Dan. He's liable to go from winning 16 in a row to losing 16 in a row. Tonight, though, he only has to win two games to get back in the winner's track and win his fifth title. Bob Vespi, an interesting story. One of the bright young stars on the tour, throws as many strikes as anybody out here. This is the fourth time he's led a tournament, Mike. In the other three chances, he's lost all three times. He's averaged only 167. Yeah, he's had some really bad outings. 150 in Las Vegas, 133 in Toledo. But he's a streaky bowler. When he finds his shot, he throws nothing but strikes. Anybody that can lead four tournaments in one year, Dan, has a lot of talent. Look out for Bob Vespi. All right, $18,000 to our winner here tonight. We're all set for the start of match number one. Amleto Monticelli looking to get back on the winning track, and he'll take on Mark Bradley. Amleto, opening shot on lane 37. Championship round pair, 37 and 38, a high-scoring pair. And Amleto, probably the best-conditioned athlete that we have on the PBA Tour. daily physical regimen. Yeah, he was telling us about it. First shot. Big Boomer comes back in an X on lane 37. You know, he runs every day, Dan, when the weather's decent. If he if he doesn't run, then he's in the gym working on the Stairmaster. He's working on the bike. He's now working with weights. Told us uh, earlier that it's more like uh, a release to him, just more than just physical conditioning. It helps him adjust to the mental stress out there. Try and relax a little bit and stay in great physical shape. Bradley backs off and was distracted by either a still photographer or something down near lane 40. Well, there was somebody going to the back, walked to the back end. <laughs> so yeah, That's perfect for your opening <laughs> shot, right? All bowlers have this great peripheral vision. He saw him. 
power player deluxe. And his first shot on national television was a beauty. Well, you know, he's wearing a microphone. We wondered, uh, 24 years old, and thought maybe, you know, he'd be thinking of a lot, a lot of other things, and he uh, just steps right up and throws strikes. Oh, boy, I notice now he doesn't have it on. He oh, practiced he, with it, and then opted to go it. He took it off. Graduated from my alma mater, University of Akron. He was a terrific collegiate bowler there. Well, three years there, right? Yeah. He's really scared, isn't he, Dan? <laughs> Not paying attention to who he's playing, either. Yep. Five-step player. Graceful, as a lot of big men are. Kind of drifts left, snaps that follow-through, sends it out to about four or five. Doesn't finish too hard at the end, does it, Dan? Well, he averaged 267 the final four games last night. Amleto Monticelli thumps one on lane 38. And if you've already told me, I, I know we're in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania tonight, Danny, but I'm going to call it Boomer City. <laughs> Did you notice, though, that that, that shot kind of rolled out right at the end? It looked like it might creep up for a four pin and just stopped. And Amleto's famous for doing that, of having the ball roll out right at about 58 feet right at the pocket. Hmm. That was a great match. Mm. See, if high we have, scores. see if we have a repeat of that tonight. 10, 300 games here this week. Of course, uh, PBA, the touring pro, set an all-time record here this week for 300s on the national tour. And Amleto, with another good shot, leaves a solid 10 pin on 37. And if Amleto has had any downfall in his career on TV, it's been his inability to convert what we would think for simple spares on television like... The 10 pin. I mean, he's had mental lapses or physical lapses and missed some stairs that have cost him a lot of money over the years. Became the PBA's eighth millionaire earlier this year. And, boy, you proved the profit there, missing left. And the 10 pin smooth. You know, he's just done this throughout his career. And, you know, you practice these things uh, in the practice session, you know, and this really isn't close. You missed that by four inches or so. When he lets it go now, he, he's pretty sure he's going to hold on. Uh, the head goes down. Bradley with a golden opportunity here. Got that inside his target, and there you see the ball sailing, and he hands it right back. Yeah, that's the inexperienced then. I mean, an experienced player knows when a guy like Enleto gives you a break by missing a 10 pin like that. You jump right on. Now they got the 8 pin fell over. And I'm assuming that nothing knocked it over, and it's going to be, have to be spotted back up that the machine knocked it over. I did not see it myself. Quickly down, set up the pin, jump back up, and yes, there are probably a couple of mechanics back there sitting on top of this pair of lanes. You know, if this were Greg Kemp, Greg Kemp throws a great backup ball, would throw a backup ball at this pair, but I don't think Mark has that in his repertoire. No, he's going with the big hook to get him the best count, and he doesn't. He only gets eight out of the shots. Uh, loses count, falls behind, even though his opponent opened. Meanwhile, Amleto, sitting on the bench, is thinking, boy, oh boy, what a major league break I got there. Yeah. And with Amleto, I, I think, you know, there's probably just a mental lapse, uh, the, just a lapse of concentration. Do some of the tour players get so enamored with striking that... Uh, they just don't concentrate on the spares? Sometimes you take them for granted. Mark Bradley trying to bounce back, and he does so with a beautiful shot on lane 37. Both players have already thrown an open, and if Amleto strikes here, he leads by five. Well, they missed the fairway twice. Good look at our Brunswick Bowler track, the first time that we have seen that here this evening. We'll be utilizing that from time to time. And, and Leto hoping for that ball to hold. It looks like he got that a little left of target. Well, he started it straighter, though, than Bradley did. You know, he was hooking it more in the practice balls. Perhaps trying to set up a... Uh, a shot, do you think? No, he told me that at the end of the practice that he was going to square it up a little bit okay. and, just, and try and just go a little bit tighter. Uh, that big hook shot, you know, can get you a lot of strikes, but it can also get you in a lot of trouble. 
That's what I always thought. Mm. Amleto looking to increase the lead to 15. Hangs it out on the flaming G. The twig, as they say. Well, the, well, the right lane is much tighter than the left, so they do want to send it. Watch it get out there. Oh, that is out on the G. That's on the flaming G. I'd like G. to see the bowler track on that one. And there we have it <laughs> at 45 feet. Goes from 10. Is that two at board 30 and then back to four oh, at 40? Sure. That's interesting. I'll tell you, between 30 and 45, it was out yeah. on the one board. Yeah. Has to hurry. And does. Ooh, an explosion on lane 38. Bradley comes back with another strike. I think we're going to see the boys throw some strikes here tonight. Keeps himself in the match. Again, the key to Watts tonight, Dan, is the right lane is, is quite a bit tighter than the left lane. That's it shown by the tighter line that Amleto's playing on that lane and already a 2 10 by uh, Mark Bradley on that lane. Absolutely terrific crowds all week long. All these folks showed up a couple of hours ago to secure seats to watch tonight. First time the touring pros have been here in Mechanicsburg and the first time that Mechanicsburg's ever been on national television for a sporting event. So the entire town has done a wonderful job hosting the PBA this week. You know, this just a hair shorter on the speed, or slower on the speed here. And again, the, the characteristic of the pair coming out, this lane hooks more. You've got to give it more room, Dan. This can be made, though. It's the, the, the 3 7 10. You make the 3 10 and hope that the 3 pin goes over and gets the 7. See if he throws it straight or throws a hook at it. Hey, what a shot, huh? Who says the power players aren't accurate? Beautiful conversion by Mark Bradley. You know, he turned it, but he threw it hard. Look at that nice straight follow through. And you know it's had a chance right here. If you're going to diagram how to make it, that's it. A trick shot by Bradley. He still trails by eight. And Leto Monticelli getting ready to look for three in a row here in Mechanicsburg. Something to drink, sir? Uh, yeah, make it a Bud Light. Sorry, we just ran out. Oh, excuse me. Bud Light. Try flight 261 out of L.A. Oh, oh, thank you. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Uh, do you have a Bud Light? Yes. Welcome aboard, sir. Great. Where are we going? If potato chips are going to cross your lips, keep them fresh. Make them fine all the time. That's Pringles. Oh, not the Pringles. Pringles. Not like chips in a bag. They don't stay fresh. It's a brag. Candles bag with bunch of pieces. Get your hands full of greases. We've got whole go, crunchy go, chips. Go, Clean and crispy go, go, to your lips. Go, go. Pringles. Not the Pringles. Go for fresh because Pringles go, got them. Go, fresh. Go. Pop right to the bottom. Once you pop, you yeah. can't. Championship round finals of the ABC West Lanes Open are being brought to you by Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down, make it a Bud Light. And by Pringles. So fresh, once you pop, you can't, you can't, you can't stop. And Leto back to work in the sixth, hangs it out, and this time doesn't carry the 10 pin. Ball rolled out of pocket, just hit all the way. A replay of that will show the ball deflected quite a bit to the right. Again, he was tighter on the last shot. He didn't get the ball this wide on the on this lane the last shot. Now watch the ball kind of straighten out there, see how much it deflected right or straight over that nine. Missed the ten earlier. And zeroes in this trip. Goes from nine to two and a half at 30 feet. And again, between 30 and 45 feet, it might have got wider. That means he's setting it down then somewhere around the 15th board. So it's came from 15 out to about one and a half or something like that at about 35 feet. Ahead by seven. And of course, we're thankful to have our outstanding Chiron operator, Betsy Lawrence, back from vacation. Magic fingers back in the truck. trips out the four. Again, that rollout action, though. That that ball was headed for four-six land and <laughs> rolled out and tripped the four. It's so deceiving because you don't think of power players as players who are rolling the ball out in the pocket. 
And Little, when he was back-to-back bowler of the year, rolled it out, I bet you 80% of the shots. Down by seven. Ooh, not a solid nine pin. That might have been his best shot. It was a good shot, Dan, all the way. But again, the, the power players, that's what they stare at. I mean, you're looking at Mark Bradley right now. He's in seven frames. Assuming he makes the spare, he's going to have two spares, four strikes, two splits, and he's lost 12 pins and count. But the philosophy is to throw as many strikes as possible, and if you do that, everything else takes care of itself. That's the philosophy. Right. Uh-oh. Missing badly on a one-pin spare, and it's interesting he did that because earlier tonight I had a chance to talk with him and ask him, what are you expecting tonight in your first championship round appearance? Well, it's a new experience, but uh, it's just another game, just like, just like we were rolling in match play the other night, except now it's on television and the lighting's a little bit brighter. Uh, just hope to go out there and keep throwing quality shots and hope the pins will fall for me. And he did throw a quality shot, and the pin didn't fall that time, the nine pin. But again, uh, it, it's, it's a classic example here of watching what happens with the power players. You never know what to expect from them. This time it goes Brooklyn, so obviously he's a little shaken up after missing the one-pin spare. Well, John Daly doesn't hit a lot of fairways at times, but he's hitting the ball 300 yards, and he's figuring that's the advantage. He'll get it on the green somehow. Down by 19, and Amleto Monticelli working on a strike. One would suspect yeah. that he would be right back there in the pocket. One would suspect. I mean, you just don't beat two-time bowlers of the year, though, missing spares. Especially single pin spares. Ironic, he missed that after making a very difficult split. Little wry smile as uh, Mark heads back to the bench. Made that spare. I think he got caught on that other shot. Now, you see, he threw that ball straight at that mm -hmm. spare, and he, I think he got caught in decision on the other shot and didn't know whether to hook it or throw it straight and kind of didn't make up his mind until after the ball was already gone. Yeah, and he half-hooked it. Yeah. And Leto trying to get by game number one. And he did exactly what we thought he would do. Now... I was talking to Amleto earlier, Dan, and he was telling me that he, when he wants to have the ball finish harder at the back end, if we watch his follow-through here, and Nelson Burton has described it like starting a lawnmower, I think that's a pretty accurate description, that when he follows through, he does it softer, slower, to try and create a softer speed and more back end. And that's what it looked like that he did on that shot on the right lane. So he wants more speed, he hits it right. faster. It'd be interesting to see if he does that on the left lane now. It looked to me like he went harder through that shot. Well, without question, he lofted the ball further, too. Yeah. Now, that, that, that's amazing talent to me to think that a player is trying to throw one speed on the left lane and a softer speed on the right lane and doing it just by his follow-through. More with the physical adjustments uh, opposed to moving on the lane or using different equipment. And we see there going from 10.5 to 3. Doesn't get quite out as far. On the left lane. Beautiful shot this time. The nine pin drops. And Mark Bradley just trying to finish it up at this point in time on a positive note. Well, he'd like to strike it out and finish with 207. I mean, if he did that, he could have two doubles and a four bagger for 207. It's like the Morris Code down there, doesn't it? I mean, that would be eight strikes for 207, though. <laughs> You'd like to have thrown eight strikes in any of the games you bowled, right? <laughs> right yeah. Even more room. Oh, another solid nine. Two of them. And that's the way you don't want to finish the match. As he heads back, though, when he gets a chance to watch the replay of this one, he'll see some excellent shots, and then he'll see some... Not so good tries. Well, you, you, you build on this. It's sure. a learning experience, and uh, you can see the man's got a lot of talent, and he's uh, he's going to be back again some other time. Teamed up with Don Johnson a few weeks ago to finish 11th in the Senior Touring Pro Doubles. Another spare, looking for a round of applause. Now at least he's kept his sense of humor. And that's important. Attitude is just so important in the sport of bowling. Uh, this game can beat you up if you let it. 
pretty lighthearted player, although right now, you know, he's got to be feeling a little disappointed. First chance at winning on national television, and he'll have to accept a fifth place check, which, by the way, will be his biggest. Just started out on the tour this summer. And for Mark Bradley, an opening game of 183. And Leto, meanwhile, on a three-bagger, looking for 246. Ooh, got the light hit that time. Yeah, but you see, that ball didn't get nearly as wide as, as uh, previous shots. Well, we'll come back with uh, match number two. But before that starts, of course, Mike Durbin with another average builder this week and it concerns ball position and uh, how to push it away properly. Get a Dodge Spirit with air, a four-speaker stereo, and lots more at no extra charge. Plus, you can get $1,000 cash back. So you can own a Dodge Spirit with all these extras for under eleven seven. dollars It's lowest price ever. So see the Dodge dealer nearest you for the new Dodge you'll want to put in your garage. Carl is having one of those days. It all started this morning when his shoes alarm didn't work. Then, in his hurry to get to work on time, he backed over his lawnmower and spilled a full cup of hot coffee in his lap. His eight-hour day at work seemed like 80, and rush hour was a two-mile parking lot. Carl needs a break. That's where pay-per-view comes in. Carl can order and watch the hottest movies without getting out of his favorite chair. Enjoy your movie, Carl. It was a lousy lawnmower anyway. Why rent it? You got it. Average Builders is brought to you by Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut, home of America's favorite pan pizza. For tonight's Average Builders, I'd like to look at the pushaway. And in the past, when I've talked about the pushaway, what I primarily recommended is holding the ball somewhere between my waist and my shoulder, over here in line with my right shoulder, like so. And when I'm ready to start, I simply think of the right hand and the right foot going together at the same time. And I imagine that I'm putting it on a table out here like so. This lets it swing free. Now, that works for me and works for a lot of people. But some people can't seem to feel comfortable holding the ball above their waist. They have trouble moving the hand and foot together at the same time, or they get the feeling that if they hold the ball up here when they push it out, that it wants to pull their head and shoulders forward. Well, if you're among that number, I have a couple of alternative pushaways, and it's one that I showed my wife a number of years ago. And it's primarily holding the ball down here like so, with the left hand still kind of cradling it, the arm fully extended, and the ball in line with my right shoulder. All I think at this point is that I want my right leg and the ball to go together at the same time, like so. And there's my push away, just like that. Now, if that feels comfortable to you, you can use that. But here's another idea that you might want to try. It's the Carmen Salvino push away that Carmen has used for the last 15 years. And that's holding the ball down here with one arm, just like so, over to the right so it's in line with my target line. I kind of lift my right heel, and when I'm ready to start, I just bring the left hand over here like so, and the right foot and the right hand go together again at the same time. Well, which push away is the best? Up high, in the middle, or down low? Well, I've all used all three during my career, and I've been fortunate enough to win with all three. But the one that works best, I think, is the one that is comfortable for you at that particular night, week, year, or point in your life. So you pick the one that is most com comfortable for you and use that and practice that one. We'll see you again next week from Buffalo, New York, or Cheektowaga more accurately, on August the 29th, when we'll have another average builder. If you have trouble in the meantime, see your local PBA pro. The final in game number one, Amleto Monticelli, 233, Mark Bradley, 183. So Amleto, for the victory, he'll move on to game number two. Let's take a look at the way the rest of the field stacked up this week. Mark Bowers was sixth, and Jason Cooper was seventh. And Rob Palumbi from nearby Erie, and Ron Williams from Fort Worth, Texas. Number 10 position, Robert Lawrence, who had a 300 game this week, and Dave Watka was 11th. And a potential bowler of the year this year, Dave Ferraro and Dennis Jakes, a name from the past. Jimmy Johnson from Columbus, Ohio, was 14th, and Tony Westlake back in the finals again. 
And a Guppy Troop, a definite name for the past, and good-looking Brian Voss. Guppy got a haircut. Jason Couch is 18th, and Brad Kazuski making his fourth consecutive top 24 appearance. And uh, the grand old man, Tom Baker, and uh, outstanding left-hander, Jeff Stayrook. 22nd this week was Fred Carroll and Scott Dellinger. Dellinger. Yeah. Frank Hamburger, you know, and George Brannan was the alternate. Nice to see some new names out there in the finals field. Yeah, they're a mouthful, too. Yeah, you're not kidding. When we come back, it's match number two here from Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. And Little Monticelli and Greg Kemp will shoe it up on lanes 37 and 38. Oldsmobile redefines quality. Here's proof. Call 1-800-THE-TEST to get independent test results from a 100,000-mile real-world test of the new Oldsmobile Achieva against Honda Accord and Toyota Camry. Learn how Achieva outperformed Accord and Camry in total cost, which includes maintenance, repair, and operating costs. You'll even get a free video documenting the test. Achieva, quality redefined from the company that went far enough to prove it. Oldsmobile, the power of intelligent engineering. Because you go all out? Because you got a stink. You're after wearing this. And here comes your chance to prove it. You will. Because because Old Spice works. Man, does it work. Spice wetness kills bacteria. The proof? Hey, hot shot. You're looking at her. <laughs> Old Spice antiperspirant for great odor protection. You demand proof, not promises. ESPN Home Video presents Practical Jokes on the Pros, a home video featuring baseball, basketball, and football stars that you'll watch over and over and over and over and over and over, and over, and over again. Oh, yeah? The hilarious Practical Jokes on the Pros. A sellout crowd on hand tonight at ABC West Lanes in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. And our first look at Greg Kemp out of Bryan, Texas, a 25-year-old right-hander who has a lot of talent. And in the top of the show, I inadvertently said he was the Southern Region Player of the Year. Of course, he was the Southwest Regional Player of the Year. So Cecil Cadell down there can relax now. I was going to say, you'll give him high blood pressure. And the opening shot, a touch light, and Greg ends up leaving the two pair. And actually, he, I think he's totally satisfied with that. You know, he got that first shot off his hand, kept it on the lane, got nine, spare he can make. Really a very likable young man. Pretty loose in the practice, but I imagine the bolts have tightened up a little bit here. <laughs> Just a little bit. Right? Yeah. Uh -oh. Just a hurry. Uh, oh, well, I said he could make it, and he didn't. Not the way that you want to open things up uh, against an assassin like Monticelli. <laughs> uh, he's got the sights already set. He's got them. Miss, it up. Is missing a spare like that kind of bleeding, like bleeding in front of a shark? <laughs> See some fins in a hurry. Yeah, this guy won't waste any time putting the clamps on. Well, it's a different stand of a, of a, a player who's totally confident in his ability. As we see it circle out, oh, not quite as far this time. Maybe the fifth board. One flush in the 1-3 pocket. Totally confident in his ability and totally focused in and thinking about nothing else except executing the shot. He's not fighting butterflies. He's not fighting uh, doubt about himself or any of these things. And Greg Kemp is. Two-time player of the year. Already has 12 career titles. One about six weeks ago in Edmond, Oklahoma. And he got way too much of that one and ends up with a break of the night. San Leto had the big four and now has an eight count. Woo, what a break. Something touched the seven pin down there, Dan, and the seven pin fell forward into the four. Again, this lane hooks more, and we see that he does not get it far enough right. Right through the heart like a knife through butter. He's got everything up there. 
10 came out of the pit to hit that seven pin and knock the seven into the four. That is the break of the night so far. A reprieve after an errant shot on the left-hand lane. Watch the pin come out of the pit. It goes to the back, comes up out of the flat gutter, and hits the seven, and the seven falls forward into the four. Did that pin hit the ball twice? Did it hit when it was coming back out? That's too? possible. Yeah. I didn't see that. Double hit ricochet. And that's the shot that Greg Kemp was looking for. If he doubles up here, all will be forgotten. But with Monticelli, that shot meant the difference of 14 pins. And he'd have had 18, 26. And now if he strikes on the right lane, he's going to have 40 in the second frame. 14 pins. That could be at the end of this game. Luck plays such a part in championship round play. One little break here or there, and that's all it takes. But it, it, it's the champion that can take advantage of that break. Take the momentum and run with it. Well, that ball hooked early all the way, and the three pins left. Well, you know, he picked a finish on the right lane, and it seemed like Mark Bradley liked the right lane better. Both of them, the softer speed, especially Greg. Greg's speed is really soft, and, and trying to find that right lane. You know, the first shot is light on the lane, and now he, he's, he's high. The speed is, you know, right at 16 miles per hour, and bellying it quite a bit. Still going high. Bear up in the third. And Leto back to work. Jimmy Pensack is qualified second. Bob Vespi, our top seed. $18,000 to the winner this evening. And Leto every year making over 100000 He's had to come from behind this year. Got off to a slow start. And that ball looked like it went a little left to start. Got into the oil, but he had enough zip to end up striking anyway. Well, he had enough finger lift to make it finish at the back end. You know, the ball, like, maybe if I threw that same shot, he would have just kept sailing and hit the three-pin flush. There you see Amleto ranked fifth right now in average. And you see the high scores this year. 220 average. 219. Right-hander and left-hander at the top of the pack. Two players vying for Player of the Year honors. A couple others involved, though, too. You're not kidding. I know one thing. I wouldn't count this gentleman out right here. And you see, I, I just admire that ability there. I mean, he shakes out, gets the break, comes back with the strike, makes the adjustment on the left lane, and bang, it's the double. And he just tells Greg Kemp, uh, young man, you better uh, better make your adjustments in a hurry or I'm going to leave you and you won't catch me. This one comes off clean. Beautiful shot by Greg Kemp, who was down on one knee. And I also had a chance to talk to Craig and ask him, well, what do you think might happen to you here this evening? Hopefully I can win. Uh, I came in this week with a little better attitude. I bowled most of the year and... I think when I came out the first of the year, I just came out expecting to win. And this week, uh, I came in with a little better attitude, thanks to Mike Alby's tip last week, was to, you have to have fun playing the game. It's, you know, it's always a sport. So, uh, this week I came in with a great attitude, and it just seemed to work every which way. Every time that I seemed to get a bad break, I would turn it around with a good break. And yesterday, last night, I started off pretty slow. In the first three games didn't bow very well. Then the fourth game I shot 300 and it motivated me right back to the show. So uh, hopefully I can win tonight. He's seen the good breaks and the bad breaks already here in just five frames. Yeah, but his breaks really are not involved with the way he's bowling on the left lane. See, he just he cannot figure out how to get the ball in the 1-3 on the left lane. He's either high or light. Two opens in three frames on that lane. Yeah. Meanwhile, Amleto goes back to the office, working on a double. And he's looking to put Kemp away very early on. Right, he, he's looking to eliminate this match in the next two strikes. Plays it tight again. Oh, look at the overreaction there. Amleto with the Brooklyn strike. And that makes it three in a row, and that adds insult to injury. He seemed to really catch all of this one, but didn't get it wide like he wanted to. <laughs> Gets the great break as it goes to the left side. The three pin goes and gets both the six and the ten. And it, ten, well, yeah, you see, he only gets it out to five and a half. And at 45 feet, it's at board seven. Well, if you're going to yank it, if you're going to yank it, uh, 
Yank it enough to Brooke. Get it Brooklyn. Spear turns over. This one goes right through the nose on the left-hand lane. And fortunate once again not to have company. Well, both players struggling on that left lane. Uh, Amleto's had the good break to break up the split in the second frame. He got the Brooklyn here in the uh, fifth frame. So uh, fortune right now smiling on, a, on the one with the most money and the most titles. <laughs> <laughs> does he make the spare? Yes, he does. And little Monticelli with a 45-pin lead, rolling, coasting to a second victory here in match number two. Okay, on the left. That's it. Smile. They're all related now. I know it's scary. Aren't you glad you used dial? Hold it. Don't you wish everybody did? Take the picture. I'm a big man. Why do so many men stick with big? I'm a big man. Because there's a big for every beard. Regular, sensitive metal. Yeah, I'm a big man. I'm a big man. When a muffler goes, some people look for a cheap replacement. They think it costs less. Fact is, they can get a quality Midas muffler starting at $24.95. Fact is, a guaranteed economizer muffler starting at $24.95. Fact is, installed by experts starting at $24.95. So when somebody says they have a cheaper muffler than Midas, they're right. When they say they're better, fact is, they're wrong. Don't believe anybody ever beats Midas. Greg Kemp, who already has a couple of regional titles to his credit, trying to win his first national PBA Tour stop. But he finds himself in the dubious position of trailing in Little Monticelli by 45 pins. And if you watch his first step with his left foot, Dan, he moves it about three boards to the left. And he does that so that he can carry the ball past his hip with no problem. Well, if he had spent all night on 38, he'd be okay. Let's see if he has uh, come up with the proper adjustments on 37 to hit the pocket and get a strike. He's got to move left and get into some more oil. I mean... Um, it's got to take some kind of, uh, of calculated risk in here, moving uh, both, I would think, his feet and target left to get into oil. Needs a double battling. That ball hooked early and never gets over to the other side. So still mystified, has not been able to solve the puzzle. Earlier this week, of course, he was feeling a little bit better because he did shoot 300 this week in Mechanicsburg. As a number of people did. We see some of them there. Cautiously optimistic as you let that one go, but he ends up with a spare. Well, there's the rest of them. And uh, notice that one down there at the bottom, Clay Pisano, uh, the son of our... TV coordinator down here, Hall of Famer, Mr. Uh, Chuck Pisano. That's right, and his twin brother okay. shot 298 this week, so it would have been the first time ever the twins shot 300 in a national event. Oh, had the big four, now he's got just one. This is magic right now by the Venezuelan. But this magic's not going to keep lasting, Then You can't keep hitting the nose shot after shot after shot like that and keep getting nine or breaking up splits late. He keeps doing that, and he's going to have a couple on one side and a couple on the other. That's going to happen at the wrong time. Maybe not in this match. No. Right through the heart of the pins again, and suddenly uh, both players are especially struggling on uh, both planes. And there you see double pinnacle up there for a while. It could have been two of them. He's broken up two double pinnacles. I guess uh, they just felt a little funny, huh? A little late. In the eighth frame, leading by 44. More room. Yeah, much more. All right, stays away from the nose, hits the half pocket, and leaves the 10 pin. And there's a good look at Jack Bauer, the gentleman's the chairman of the... ABC Lanes Incorporated Company here, and they own three bowling centers in the Harrisburg area, and uh, he was delighted with the fans this week and the Pro-Am entries and uh, really enjoyed the tournament. 
patriarch of the whole Bauer family. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And it's an, an outstanding bowling family. Once again, Amleto Monticelli misses the 10 pin on the left hand lane. Mm. That looked like an instant replay. And he knew he missed it as soon as he let it go. I mean, uh, he gets it in the middle on that left lane. There's not oil there to make it slide. It just hooks. 203 for Kemp if he can strike out. So it still can be done with a pencil. Question is, can he do it with that bowling ball? Well, he only has to get one strike on the left lane to have a chance. Because he's got no trouble with this lane. He has yet to hit the pocket on the left-hand leg. And he's had the three-pin up there, I think, at least three different times. And three with something else. But, uh, you know, he was light the first frame. He's been high ever since. Now yeah, left the three-pin in the third, the three, six, seven, ten in the fifth, the three, six in the seventh. Maybe this is his frame. And he's made a move right, then. He's going to go straighter and use a straighter hand release. This time gets it to the right side of the head pin and can't get rid of the two. Did you see that, though? Sure. That's exactly what he did do. And I give him credit for, for making that uh, that effort in a crucial situation like that. You know, he wasn't going to strike the other way. Uh, at least he, he tried something different. You know, he only needed one strike on that lane to get himself back in the match. A confident, bold move. It just didn't quite pay off. And you see the difference. It, started, it goes from 8 to 4. looks like one of my shots. But, uh, <laughs> and the speed goes up to 18 miles per hour. Just boom, boom. He, he tried to make the adjustment. That left lane is tough. And obviously the lanes are changing on the fly almost here as the scores were much higher in game number one, especially for Amleto. Amleto still has room, though, for 225. And for Greg Kemp, it'll be a fourth-place finish in his first championship round try. Well, nothing wrong with that. He gave it room that time, Dan. We had a little bit of everything this game. I'll tell you. You know, you, you might think that that is lack of concentration. It really isn't. The, the lane is hooking early. You've got to give it room to the right, and he just gave it too much room. Well, you know the next shot's got to be going left early. Well, we'll yeah. find out. He's still going to win, even if it doesn't. Nice to be able to stand up and throw a channel shot in the 10th frame and walk away with a victory. He can, still, he can throw two of them. That one would come nowhere near the channel. <laughs> and Leno wisely going for the nine count. And a low scoring victory in match number two as Amleto shoots 193, but it was more than enough. Earlier today, of course, at the International Castle Pines Golf Club in Castle Rock, Colorado. Some outstanding scores in that uh, Stableford System tournament. Of course, live coverage on ESPN once again tomorrow. I think Greg Wiseman had 20 points, Bob Gilder with 15, Craig Stadler with a dozen. It's a whole different type. You get, what, five, I think five points for an eagle, three for a birdie? Yeah, and then you lose points with bogeys and, and double bogeys. That double bogey is the worst you can make. So you'd probably be in the minus category. Well, with my handicap, <laughs> yes, I think I probably would, yes. All right, we'll come back with the start of match number three. A little on a chili, climbing up the ladder. He did it earlier this year in Edmond, Oklahoma. Will he repeat? Only time will tell. All pro quarterback Dan Marino. When the game is over and the pain starts, I want two things for my pain relieving rub fast relief and no odor. So I use Sports Cream, a strong pain relieving rub that doesn't make me smell like a medicine chest. I just massage in Sports Cream for fast odor free relief, cream or lotion. Sports Cream sure gets my vote for fast relief and no odor. It's not easy to pull yourself away From a bowl of Kellogg's Raisin Bran Those two scoops of raisin taste so good you'll find That once you start, you can leave them behind the clothes Two scoops that taste too good to pull yourself away Your 
you're about to see the power of subliminal advertising. Now, can you name bowling's hookingest and bashingest new ball? It's the new Rhino Pro. 100% urethane in a conventional two-piece design. Only at your local pro shop. What'll it be, fellas? Make it a Bud Light. Sorry. This is the last one. Well, I think I've been... Well, I think that one... What do you want to give? Four, and I'm a two, and a ten. Give me ten, and a twenty big. Give me twenty now, thirty. Give me thirty now, forty big. Give me forty now, fifty. Give me fifty now, sixty big. Give me sixty now, seventy. Give me seventy now. 80. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Bud, Bud Light, please. Sorry, boys. This is the last one. Big hitters and big numbers are the ones to watch in a tournament where the highest score wins. See who comes out on top as the international continues. Live from Colorado, Friday afternoon on ESPN. Low-scoring affair in match number two for Amleto Monticelli. It was a three-bagger from the third through the fifth that gave him the early lead. And despite a channel shot in the tenth frame, he goes on to victory. The final score, 193 to 169. And for Amleto Monticelli, his second consecutive victory as he defeated Mark Bradley in game number one. The final there was 233 to 183. And standing by now with Mike Durbin is our top seed, Bob Vespi. Thank you, Dan. Uh, Bob... So far this year, six championship round appearances. This is the fourth time you've led a tournament. Uh, you seem to be a type of bowler that when you're hot, you're just almost impossible to beat. Uh, what are your feelings on that? Well, I'm just glad to have the chance to compete out here. These guys are the greatest. And when you lead a tournament, it's just because you carry better that week than the other players. And I'm just glad to have such fortunate luck to, to have that happen to me. Well, you know, right now you stand at $107,000. In fact, I think we're going to have a graphic up here. Uh, you're the first player in only his second year, the, the sophomore year, to make $107,000. If you win tonight, it's 18000 more. Does that uh, exceed your wildest dreams? It, it, very much so. You know, I came out here just hoping to break even for my first year. You always hear the horror stories about guys going out and having a real rough time. I just feel really lucky that I've done so well. You know, I went out just trying to break even, and then I had a great first week, and from then on, just everything went real smooth. Let's talk about uh, the tournaments that you've led so far this year. This is the fourth time, but in the previous three that you led the tournament, you had some trouble. What went wrong? Well, I think a lot of it was nerves at the time. You know, I was uh, very young in bowling. I've only been a member for two years. You know, I never really thought I'd be in that position, and when I got there, the the, the lanes were a little bit different, you know, and 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 inexperience was a big key to that whole thing. All right, if you win tonight, I think that you've got a chance for Bowler of the Year. What do you think? I surely hope so. You know, Dave Farrow and Eric Fork have really good stats, and a uh, win here would definitely put me in the running, but an impressive fall would even help me out more. Okay, and if you win, I understand you're going to give some money away? Yeah, I'm going to make a donation uh, to the Big Brothers and Big Sisters organization of uh, Harrisburg and Mechanicsburg area. I did an exhibition with them this past weekend. I had a really good time with them and got to meet some of the people that make that association work. Good luck to you, Bob. Thanks a lot. Well, we're going to find out if the uh, two-time bowler of the year, Amleto Monticelli, can continue winning by beating a very hot bowler himself in Jim Pensek. We'll be right back. Getting in a practice round? Getting ready for a big tournament. You seem pretty active. Sure am. When I'm finished here, I'm going to take a trip to Africa, dance the Texas two-step, and go whale watching. Wow. How do you do all that? To tell you the truth, I don't do all of it. But what I don't do, I sure enjoy on cable TV. That sounds more like it. Watch it, young man. I work out with cable exercise shows. Wonder Cable. Great performances every day. Get a free bowling ball. Clearview Lanes wants you to have a free ball this fall. Sign up for a 92-93 fall league and Clearview Lanes will give you a new ball free. And all current league bowlers who bring a new bowler for a fall league will receive a $20 gift certificate. New bowlers must not have bowled at Clearview in the past year. For more information, contact Clearview Lanes, 1990 West Main Street, Mount Joy at 653-1818. 653-1818. Clearview Lanes, we're giving away free balls for fall. Winner of four. Putting the fun back into golf. 
the Fred Meyer Challenge, Monday and Tuesday on ESPN. Jim Pensack and Little Monticelli, a couple of vets out here on the PBA Tour, will go at each other for the rights to bowl our top seed, Bob Vespi. And we'll see what uh, Pensack can do with this left lane. Uh, <laughs> Greg Kemp could never figure out anything on it. Let's see what he can do. Jimmy averaged 226 on this pair of lanes. Comes out quick. That one hooks a little early. So, yeah, you're right on the button with that assessment of lane 37. It's been a tricky lane. And, you know, I didn't bowl on the lane, so it's hard to tell what the adjustment should be. I don't know whether if they move left, they're going to find more oil or not, Then, uh, If not, then the adjustment that Greg Kemp tried to make in the ninth frame by straightening out the, the shot and throwing the flatter hand release would be that, or either switching to a, a ball that went straighter. the three takes out the six and leaves the ten that's not easy to do no and see that's the danger you, you take by throwing a hook ball at this spare why uh hook ball bowlers do that i don't know why not throw it straight at the spare when you just hit the three pin on the right you got to make it you could throw a hundred shots and not do that yeah but the guy hooks as much as he does can do it he might be right and Leto, after a rest tightens the line up a little bit on 38 and comes out gunning with a strike I really think that that's a dangerous shot, though, for him on that lane, though, Dan, because if he slows that speed down just a half a mile per hour, it's, it's trouble. And he's already seen his fair share of trouble, and game number two had just 193, but it was more than enough. And going through his mind now, don't think it's not, is that channel ball that he threw in the 10th frame. You know, that, uh, that kind of makes an indelible impression on national television to do that, even when you win. He'd like to get Jim Pensack down quickly, if possible. A double here would do that. A little straighter. There you see. Hooks high, but this time Amleto gets it to sit for a fraction, and he trips out the four pin. Now I'm going to have to study that and watch that a little bit and see if he's changed his hand release some and going through it straighter, Dan. It appears that that may be the case. Now he's putting tape in the ball. And as far as I know, the 25-second clock is still ticking. No, I guess he is allowed to put the, the tape in the ball, and then once he finishes that, then the clock starts. Very aggressive player from start to finish, and that's what Jimmy Pensack was looking for, a, a stable shot on the right-hand lane. Of course, everybody's been able to hit the right-hand lane. It's the left-hand lane that's posed the problem. Yeah, that's what it's been. The guy that can solve that left lane is the one that's going to win the tournament. Well, let's see if he moves left or if he tries more speed or maybe even moves right. Definitely needs more speed. I mean, he, 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 you're not going to knock the pins down in this lane without speed. And did you see the increase in speed? Sure. Now we should track that on bowler track. Yeah, that was a little more direct even, and uh, there was some velocity there. Here's Amleto and, and Pensac. Okay. All right, 15 to 6.5. That was frame 3, and the average speed just over 17 miles per hour. So he's throwing harder right now than anyone else. Amleto got a handful on that shot. Picks out the eight pin and he starts with a three bagger. This, this is his first uh, from the first match. His first strike on lane 38, and you can see only 16.4 miles per hour, bellying it out uh, from 50. <laughs> now he's now he's now he's picked up the speed a little bit, and not quite the belly. So he's changed. You know, just increased the speed, not quite as much turn and going more direct. Well, this was a double bouncer that never did get into a roll, and Amleto will take what he can get there. Well, yeah, it, was, it was better than zero. Better than zero. And again, you can get too cute, you know. See that follow through go way left on that one, though? I mean, it always goes somewhat left with Amleto, but that one really got in front of his head. Watch his arm, watch the follow through. See, so go way in front of himself. And then back. That's how you end up with stove fingers, too. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever do that as a junior bowler? No, I never did. Ooh, I did it a couple of times. Oh, bounce it? And then, oh, are you oh, kidding yeah. me? 
Either that or off the ankle? Well, I've done off the ankle a number of times. Yeah, yeah. that's no funny. No, that... Uh, Down by 21, but on a double. He likes this lane. Oh, look at that one sail, and a major problem for Jim Pensack. Looked like he drifted further left in his approach, got his shoulder opened up more, started in the oil, and it just never had a chance to come back. He had already lost the grip on it. You can see him shake his hand as he walked away. He put a piece of tape in the ball. Maybe the thumb hole is just a little too big. Well, he put it in the frame before, though. I mean, mm -hmm. that feel of the ball, though, is so important. You know, you've got to have that right feel to have confidence. That strike keeps him right in the match. Oh! Conversion for Pensac. Well, we've seen some exciting spare conversions as he makes the one, two, four, six, ten by going to the left. The head pin goes into both the six and the ten. So what happens so often is you you make the ten and you go right around the six. What do you think the uh, probability is to make that? What percentage? Oh, probably twenty-five percent. Mm -hmm. Still down by 26, but still alive after a beautiful conversion. Well, if he had struck in the fourth frame, this would be a different match. Of course, coming up next week, the Ebonite PBA Senior Championship from Thruway Lanes in Cheektowaga, New York. All the top seniors will be on hand for that one. And we take a look at the fall tour. We'll be back starting on October 7th with a couple of senior events down in the state of Florida. And then there's a good look at the PBA Fall Tour on ESPN for the first time in many years. And Leto, another break. This time the seven pin goes down. Good release, though, that time, though, Dan. He went, uh, he went direct. Not uh, playing it super tight. Got out about the six board. Got the break that the head pin came off and got that seven pin down. <laughs> All right, and Leto has nine lives. He's used up about five. And you see how direct he's going. Just about a four and a half board belly. He's turned into uh, a stroker here. Other thing that's interesting, he's missed the 10 pin twice in the left hand lane where you have plenty of room on the approach. On the right hand lane where there's less room, he's made it every time. It's more demanding shot. I guess he gets his attention more or something. I don't know. That'll happen. Bob Vespi waiting anxiously to try and win from the top seat position for the first time this year. And Vespi hooks it more than anybody on the telecast. Ooh! Out on the half board, and Leto says, Yes, it's coming back. I know it is. He leads by 25, and he's on a strike. Hey, Hannon! Lunch! Hey, you're right. No! I mean, see what everybody wants. Two cheese burgers and quarter pounder with cheese. Large fries. Uh, Big back. Make it two. Got it, kid. With McDonald's Extra Value Meals, Eight, you one. can order your Eight, favorite number food two. by number. Four, number. Served up fast, guaranteed. What you want is what you get at McDonald's today. Hannon! Nice job. It's yours from now on. This is the end of how you think about dandruff shampoo of Head & Shoulders as you now know it. Now it's better. Because new Head & Shoulders gets to 10 times more of the places dandruff starts to help prevent flakes. Hey, would you try this with your ordinary shampoo? I think not. No other shampoo has this formula. New Head & Shoulders. This could be the end of flakes. Period. We're in the seventh. Pensack with a key double in the sixth. Could get to within five with a strike here. Good shot, Dan. This is uh, the strike that while we were away, he got on the right lane. Was to debate whether it was going to hold pocket. That ninth pin was up there for a second. We've seen that three times already this night. And then he leaves the ten just when a strike would have gotten him within... Uh, a closer range of Amleto. Close enough to see the whites of his eyes. Or something like that. <laughs> I know one thing, Jim Pensack's wife, Liz, who is expecting in February, was really hoping for a strike there. Boy, it's harder on the wives. Look at that, that tension and stress on her face. 
and then the serene look of Emlotta Monticelli. Uh-oh. Well, that was left of the head pin at about 35 feet. <laughs> You know, you talked to him earlier and asked him if he were an accurate player. And uh, you want to respond to <laughs> what he said? <laughs> Not particularly at times, but it's it's a zone situation. You're just trying to get it somewhere in the neighborhood. I also had a chance to talk to Armleto and ask him about, do you think you could win four matches again like you did in Edmond, Oklahoma, earlier this summer? Well, it um, depends. Uh, that day seems like it was easy, but uh, I think, you know, for everybody's tough, uh, you need a little luck and you need to concentrate good, make good shots, and uh, you hope, you know, you win. And uh, I was also kidding him, Leto, I'm going to have him, if he wins tonight, receive and speak in Spanish and maybe even Italian. He does speak three languages fluently, although right now the language he's probably speaking no one would want to hear as he leaves the 710. Yeah, when, he, when he cusses him out, I wonder what language it's in, you know? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> he converted the 710 last night? Yep. And he tied a match against Brad Kazuski. I think it was tied at 246. Hard, double hit it. How about a replay? No. You know, his dad in Venezuela, they get ESPN down there. They translate your and I, our commentary in Spanish. And uh, his dad watches all the telecasts. So I told him if he wins, he can, he can accept in Spanish tonight, and then they won't even have to. They won't have to translate. Exactly. His dad will understand. Do you speak Spanish? Not fluently. Sometimes on the golf course. Un poco, huh? <laughs> Three-pin match. Ooh, it's turned around. Jimmy's saying, let me rev one up. Let me have a strike here, and I'll make a run at this thing. Jimmy puts his whole heart and soul into it. He's uh, an emotional player. So it's maybe his best shot. Now, see the difference in that follow-through? It comes whistling right past his ear. Whack. Ball finishes over the eight pin. But here's the big shot on this lane. He knows he can strike on lane 38. It's 37. And he's had pretty good luck with this lane since the first frame. Comes off the hand nicely. And a solid hit. Ball held pocket for Pensack, who doubles in the eighth and the ninth and takes the lead for the first time in the match. Well, this is the first time that Amleto has been behind at this point in the match. But Amleto has been here before. And we see Pensack. Going from 15 to 7, and then that 45 feet, it started back. Almost 17 miles per hour. Good, firm shot. And Leto trying to answer the challenge, and this time doesn't get the break. Six pin right around the 10. A long afterthought and a look, but it does him no good. Great shot there, Dan. Uh, just a bad break. He's been getting good breaks all night long, and now the last two frames, the 7 and the 10, and now the 10 pin. And we watch the six whistle right around the ten here. Not as good a shot as a pro could throw in that situation. He's still in the match. He's seven pins down. If he can double in the tenth frame, he can force Pensack to strike. But now he moves over to the Magical Mystery Tour, lane 37. He's going to give it room. I, I just feel that that's going to be his shot, you know, the one shot back in the sixth frame when he got it right out to the edge, even the ninth frame or the eighth frame with the seven and the ten. He's going to give it room. Well, he got all of it. And couldn't make the six-pin hit. So Amleto Monticelli will have to settle with a spare and a strike for 205. And it's going to come down to, although Amleto has missed two ten pins on this lane, uh, if he converts this 10-pin, Pensac is going to need some kind of mark in the 10th frame. Amleto was in control until he got the pocket 7-10 in the 8th frame. Ah, Dennis Baldwin on hand here this evening from Hammer Industries. Well, if, if uh, my calculations are right, he needs uh, 7 or better to force him to mark. So 204. 
In the first two games, Sam Leto's opponents averaged just 175 against him. Pensack has room for 232. And I think that, he, you know, he picked a finish on this lane. You would think that he would get the mark. He's made his best shots on lane 38. A nice break indeed to rid himself of the two pin. I don't know what hit that two pin. Something hit it to make it fall four, but that was a nice break indeed. Now a much easier spare in that eight pin. Watch it as it comes out wide. He starts it in the oil, tried to trust it. And it was the four pin that came back forward and got the two. From behind. No and trouble. Jim Pensack will advance, and Leto can only think about what might have been had he carried the 7-10. Needs four pins. Been a two-year drought for Jim Pensack, who at one point in time had won 16 consecutive matches in the championship round. record with this will advance to 22 and 8 in the championship round. Incredible average. Takes out the 10. Pensack applauds the crowd and says I'll be there for the title game and Leto Monticelli ends up with a third place finish and $7,000. When we come back and look at our Midas championship frame and of course the start of the title match. Why does so many men stick with Vic? I'm a big man. Because there's a Vic for every beard. Vic regular, a great shave at a great price. I'm a big man. Vic sensitive, Vic baby's tender skin. Vic metal, slim head, total control. Yeah, I'm a big man. I'm a big man. Regular, sensitive, metal. I'm a big man. The bright, invigorating scent of Coast. Discover how it wakes you up and jumpstarts your day. Up and at <laughs> Coast, the eye-opener. If you want a beer that drinks easy like a light and has real draft taste, why not make a change for the better? Refreshingly different, but dry. Bud Dry is one beer that drinks easy like a light and has real draft taste. So why not come around to something refreshingly different? Try Bud Dry. Nobody beats Midas. Nobody. And let's pick up the action in game number one. This was in the eighth frame. And Amleto had a lot of strikes in the match. The eighth frame put him well ahead in the match as he went on to beat Mark Bradley. Mm -hmm. 233 to 183 was the final score there. Amleto with a four-bagger from the seventh through the tenth. More than enough for victory and match number one and then it was uh, game number two and a little different story this time it was a strike of the night but Greg Kemp never could find the left lane and so uh, this just more or less locked it up interestingly enough he gets a strike in the ninth frame and then follows it by a channel ball in the tenth but 
He got the one he needed to win. Boy, a pretty shot there for Amleto Monticelli, who went on to win match number two by the final score of 193 to 169. Uh, he was not so fortunate, though, in the semifinal match against Jim Pensack after a 7-10 split. Jimmy needed just a spare in the 10th frame. And he broke down the 2-8 to leave only the 8. Should be a simple spare for a professional bowler, and it turned out to be simple for Jim Pensack, who's going to advance to the championship match. Mm, it's been a while since he has seen a title on the PBA Tour. 210 to 204 was the final. When we come back to Mechanicsburg and ABC West Lanes, it'll be Jim Pensack in the top seed, Bob Vespi for the championship. When a muffler goes, some people look for a cheap replacement. They think it costs less. Fact is, they can get a quality Midas muffler starting at $24.95. Fact is, a guaranteed economizer muffler starting at $24.95. Fact is, installed by experts starting at $24.95. So when somebody says they have a cheaper muffler than Midas, they're right. When they say they're better, fact is, they're wrong. Don't believe anybody ever beats Midas. Okay, on the left, that's it. Smile, they're all related now. They know it's scary. Aren't you glad you use dial? Hold it. No, oh, no, don't go anywhere. Don't you wish everybody did? Take the picture. Everyone calls me father. And I love a kid's cereal. Brave adults wrestle with the notion that Kellogg's Frosted Flakes is just for kids. I work with tigers. I never thought I'd love one. That delectable frosting, that incredible crunch. No wonder adults never outgrow the taste. Oh, I'm guilty. 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 <laughs> it's no crime. Frosted Flakes have the taste adults have grown to love. They're great. We've just discovered an artifact used by Columbus himself on board the Nina. That's a mug from Long John Silver's. Just 99 cents with any meal. I have a complete set. We've just discovered a complete set of artifacts. Go fish! Oh, go Silver's! Final two here at ABC West Lanes in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Jimmy Pensack will start the title match on lane 37. And I would have thought that uh, Vespi would have finished on 38. It looked like he was hitting that lane better in practice, but it uh, didn't turn out that way. It looked to me like he was hitting both. Ten sack fresh from that victory over M. Little Monticelli. Mm, boy, what a break right there. The tin pin fell at the last moment. Well... We've seen some 710s. We saw a few in the practice balls, and uh, that was the turning point last uh, game. He breaks it up, though. Power players equalizer, the pocket 710. Well, the 2810, too. Mm, good point. Cross lane. Uh-oh, mistake for Pensack. Not what you want to do to start a title game. And you see how he hooked it at it? And again, you know, we had an average builder a few weeks past about uh, the contemporary player throwing it straight at all spares. Jimmy didn't do that, and you can see it gets away. I've done that. That's a helpless sure. feeling. I've done that in the past so many times. Vespi corkscrews it right into the lane, runs it out, and you could see him desperately wanting to get off and not hit the first hurdle this trip. Yeah, he's done that in the past, hit that first hurdle. Yeah, and then didn't even finish the race. As soon as we're done, we'll be heading out to the Taj Mahal in Atlantic City, New Jersey for live top-ranked boxing. Carl The Truth Williams featured this evening and a 10-rounder, and he hits very hard as a heavyweight. Don't they all? Yeah, well, the truth be known. Looking for that double. Has to hurry. And does. Nice shot. Must be playing the heavyweight role here in Mechanicsburg. Comes out laying the leather early. Pensack reeling is on the ropes. From 18 to 7 to 5. And you figure that he's setting it down left of 20. So he's bellying it in the neighborhood of 15 boards, at least. Which would be about average for him. Pensack trying to fight back, cuts right through the nose, leads to 3-6-10, and right now he just has to deal with adversity. Forget about the first frame and get the job done from here. Well, that can unnerve you. You make a stupid mistake like that on an easy spare, and it's hard to put it out of your mind and put it behind you and focus on what you're doing. And now, you know, he missed his spare in the first frame last game. Exactly.
exactly the same thing. I'd have bet a million dollars you couldn't do that twice in any given night. Hmm. One out of a hundred, huh? Guess not. With a hook ball like that. Why? Don't ask why. After you've done it the first time, why wouldn't you move left and throw it hard? It's not your style. Nevertheless, <laughs> eight out of seven is... Yeah, it's time to change your style. Yeah. Oh, boy. Tragedy in the opening couple of frames. Oh, no, and you leave it again? Let's see if he changes. Daryl Bauer, one of the outstanding players for a while on the national tour, of course, is involved uh, in the three bowling center uh, company that's sponsoring this tournament. And let's see if he makes an adjustment. I'd do it three out of three. I'll tell you, Dan, I'd be afraid to throw right now. My knees would be shaking. It's probably what Daryl's thinking. Please, Jimmy, don't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy. I'll tell you one thing. This guy is all heart, and he does wear his emotion on his sleeve. Good or bad? Good or bad. Well, so does this young man. Oh, I'll yeah. tell you what. And he has seen the other side. Shot 133 in Toledo, 150 another time. He'd like to end this one early tonight, and he starts with the first three. Doing everything he can to get rid of Jim early. Well, he started with a double in the 150 game out in Las Vegas, and, and from, it was all downhill after that. He leads by 43. Mm. Dash, dash, spare for Jim Pensack. That looks like Morris Code and yeah. uh, the wrong message. 17 in the second is not what you're after. Guarantee you one thing, this guy will fight back. And Busby knows that. The rack on 37, another strike. Vespi with the first four. And he is out to a comfortable lead. Don't forget, next week, the best in senior bowling on ESPN. It starts at 4.30, 4.30 to 6, a little different time. And then, of course, is on Saturday afternoon from Thruway Lanes, the Ebonite PBA Senior Championship. So a Saturday afternoon telecast, mm. huh? Yep. To wrap up the summer tour. Pensack saying, not the 3-6-10, anything but the 3-6-10, and that's what he gets. Well, you know, you have uh, cursed or blessed or whatever I mean with the name of the 3-6-9-10 is the Durbin, you sure. know, and Vespi earlier this year got the 4-7-8 out of a full rack that was known as the Vespi. Now when somebody goes and picks the 6 out of the 3-6-10, it's going mean, to be Pensack. known as the Pensack. Mm -hmm. You're right. I mean, I've only seen that once or twice. I saw it twice tonight. Shake out that nine pin. Has a wiggle, but doesn't quite want to fall. That would have been a double and some respectability. Well, it would have been something to build on right now. He's just staring at X's by his opponent, and uh, he can't get a double. So, comes a little high. The two pin gets the four, and the four hits the nine, but not enough to knock it over. Almost. Flat bottoms. This is an interesting little look here statistically when you talk about where players start. Look at that. Vespi, 58th, went from there to 13th, and then just kind of rode the horse right into the number one position. Great camp. What a nice tournament he had all week long. Never lower than third, except <laughs> tonight he wanted to finish in fourth. Vespi asking for another. And five in a row. Joe looks on. Happy to be on hand tonight. And uh, seven more, and there'll really be a celebration. And as I told you earlier, I know I'm in trouble when I'm older than the parents. So uh, you're almost getting to that no, point. No, 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 Mike, you're so far ahead of me, <laughs> I will never catch you. That's you're true. more than a decade ahead, Mike. And unless you start cheating, it will not happen. Well, can I go backwards now? I mean, Some say you've been going backwards for years, Michael. <laughs> Must be re in the sixth frame after starting with a five back. Well, hey, you never know. He's thinking about uh, winning, but he the 300's in the back of his mind. That's right, and it would be an extra $10,000 from the PBA. Ah, halfway home. The fans here are going nowhere. They may see what we all want to see. A perfect game. And it's interesting because we know the lanes are not that easy. He's just coming out and overpowering them. The other people, Greg Kemp, couldn't even get 
to the 1-3 on lane 37. You know, Bob made a very good point in your interview with him. He said, you know, most times what happens when a guy leads a tournament is that he has carried better than everybody else throughout the week. He said, that's what I did here. When I made good shots, I threw strikes. And when I made marginal shots, I still got away with them. Well, I've watched him some other tournaments. That he can definitely throw strikes. <laughs> X's are not usually the problem. Not if he can get it to the 1-3. If he can get it to 1-3, he strikes. I mean, the angle of entry of his ball, he's got such a wide angle of entry, almost coming in behind the head pin, that the better the angle, the better chance to strike. That's why the, the players that really arc the ball, when they get it going, I mean, they can strike on a high hit, they can strike on a flush hit, they can strike on a light hit. I think the American Bowling Congress did a study on that where they, they measured that angle of entry coming in and, and verified just what you're just saying there. That as that thing comes in from that wider angle, you just, uh, your percent carry percentage goes up, 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 up. Sure. Pocket, I mean, the pocket starts looking like it's three feet wide. Like that, he got that wider angle of entry on that shot. Hmm? Well, if we get a chance, maybe on our camera down low, if he throws another strike here in the next couple of frames, we can check that out. The better the angle, the better the chance, although it's not easy to create that angle. Well, that seems to be the only drama left in this match, though. Did you see the six get that ten? Looking to join a select group if he wins here tonight. M. Leno was trying to give it a run, but look at all the players in the run for Bowler of the Year. Boy, it is really a race. That we're, fall tour is going to be exciting, Dan. We're going to have a great time. Of course, he'll move into the number three position money-wise, and I think he's going to safely do that tonight if he wins. Plus, he could get ten more if he shoots 300. He could go to 135. Mm -hmm. Climbing the ladder. Stood up on that one. Liked it. Oh, Vespi running him out. He's got the first eight. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Jim Pensack saying, I think it's time for me to get out of the way and see what happens. Of course, two of my good friends, Dickie Grand and Jeff Mraz, back in the Akron, Ohio area, sponsor Jim Pensack. And they're very proud of his accomplishments out here on the national tour. As well they should be. Oh, you're not kidding. Plus, Jimmy Pensack is as good a player as we have when it comes to the Pro-Am, as far as mixing with the amateurs, making them feel like they have a good time, being a, a, uh, a pro-man or, or a public relations man for the PBA. Intensity written all over Bob Vespi. Talk about opposite ends of the spectrum. Shooting 133 in the top seed position game in Toledo. Now he's able to shoot 300 here tonight. And the way he's hitting that left lane, Dan, I think this is the key shot right here myself. close to making it happen. Boy, those pins were dancing. It just turned left at the end. See that elbow bent there? Snaps that up from right behind the ball. That's all forward roll, Dan. Now watch it just turn left there. Pins all over the deck. And he gives it to Johnny Carson lookalike. Golf swings the eight pin out of the way. And he'll waltz to victory number two here in 1992. And that genuine smile on his face. 24-year-old superstar waiting to happen out here on the National Tour. You made another good point, Mike. You know how tough it is to lead four tournaments in a year against the competition out here now? Oh. Now he's got a taste of winning from that top seed position. What will that do confidence-wise to a player of his ability? <laughs> yeah, he's right, right now. He's on cloud nine. He just bouncing back off that approach. You know? <laughs> oh, it's so fun when you start with the first eight. With a couple more strikes, a game of 279. Brilliant performance tonight by Bob Vespi, who averaged, by the way, 258.6 on this pair of lanes this week. Again, you know, I said in the ninth frame, the way he was hitting that left lane, I thought the, the ninth frame was the key shot because he was just wired on lane 37. Ah, uh, they say, the ecstasy of winning. Uh, you have felt it. It's a unique feeling. Freewheeling and another 
a strike. Vespi with 11 strikes and 12 tries shoots a bomb in the title match. 279. In pilot jargon, it's called a walk around. You see them do it before every takeoff of every plane. What you don't see are their qualifications to fly those planes. It takes them years and thousands of hours of experience. And every year they're schooled and tested. No exceptions. Because when you're a United pilot, you hold a lot more in your hands than just the controls. Come fly the airline that's united the world. Come fly the friendly skies. I'm a big man. Why do so many men stick with Vic? I'm a big man. Because there's a Vic for every beard. Vic regular, a great shave at a great price. I'm a big man. Vic sensitive. Vic baby's tender skin. Vic metal. Slim head, total control. Yeah, I'm a big man. I'm a big man. Regular, sensitive, metal. I'm a big man. Excuse me, do you know what stock options are? I wish I did. When is the weak dollar good for business? Good? I don't know. The world of finance and investing can be pretty confusing, unless you call for this. The Wall Street Journal's Video Guide to Money and Markets. It explains the markets in clear, simple English and brings them to light. This exclusive 30-minute video is free when you call for 13 weeks of the Wall Street Journal for just $37, over 20% off the newsstand price. Subscribe to the journal and get a daily view of the whole world of business and how it affects you. Information you know you should know. Call now and you'll be ready next time someone asks you. Are munis always a safe investment? I'm not sure. Call toll-free 800-332-1800 for 13 weeks of The Wall Street Journal and your free video on money and markets. That's 800-332-1800. The championship round finals of the ABC West Lanes Open are being brought to you by United. Come fly the airline that's uniting the world. Come fly the friendly sky. What a performance by Bob Vespi. A game of 279. Jim Shelley, who is the uh, general manager here, has a beautiful trophy. Congratulations, Bob. Thanks a lot. Jim. Great bowling. We're what? proud to have you as our first champion. Oh, I'm more than proud to be it. You know, the, the, the whole ABC West lanes and the, and the staff here has been great to me all week. Uh, I couldn't have couldn't have asked for a better way, way to end this whole tournament. Well, I've got, I've got a better ending for you. Mr. Bauer also has a check as well. <laughs> yes, Bob. Thanks it's my pleasure to give you a check for $18,000. Congratulations. Thanks a lot, Gary. I'd like to also thank the whole entire Bauer family. They put on a great show for us all week. They show us great courtesy. And it's really nice to bowl when you're showing the respect that a professional deserves, you know. All right. We'll be back to talk further with the man who almost shot 300 here this evening, the latest champion, Bob Vespi.